If you want to mod Skyrim or another Bethesda Game Studios game directly on your Steam Deck without having to use another computer, this is the guide for you. I'll be setting up Mod Organizer 2 today on the Steam Deck by using a repo created by Rocker Bacon, and all the source code can be found on GitHub for this. This program allows us to set up Mod Organizer 2 for a variety of Bethesda games, and it'll make a direct installation for just specific games. So if you're used to using Mod Organizer on something like the PC, you can use it to manage a variety of games, but here, it will do individual installations per game just to manage that one specifically. For this program to work, we're gonna to need to set up one dependency and that's Proton Tricks. Now there's two ways to install this and I'll cover both of them today. One of them is more in depth, but it gives us the possibility to use the browser features better in Mod Organizer 2 than the easy way does. Once we get Mod Organizer 2 set up, I'll show you how to install mods right from Nexus Mods onto the Mod Organizer 2 installation for Skyrim, and I'll cover some common mistakes you might encounter during this process and how you can fix them. On the bottom of each section of this video, there will be a progress bar that fills up as we go through each chapter, so you have a good indication of where we're at. Before we jump into the guide, consider subscribing to my channel. I have a bunch of Steam Deck guide, analysis, and impression videos, so check it out if you want to see more just like this. Before we jump into it, make sure that your game is installed to your internal SSD, because this program is going to assume that it's installed there, I've seen some people talking about using symbolic links to use your game on your micro SD card, but I will not cover that today. So the first thing we're doing here is going ahead and grabbing the program we want. Here's a repo for it. All the code is public, so you can look into it if you want. Now listed here, we have the dependencies that we need. All of these are already on the Steam Deck besides Proton Tricks. For 7-Zip, I didn't need to set anything up, and I just did a clean install with the latest firmware on the Steam Deck, so you shouldn't need to either. Also here for the Features tab, there's a bunch of games here and it's listed how they're supported. It varies, Skyrim has pretty good support, so we're just gonna go ahead and use that game for now. Now I'm gonna grab the latest release of this and just open it up with my Arc File Explorer and extract this to my downloads folder or wherever you want. Now let's set up Proton Tricks. As I mentioned earlier, there are two methods. So I'll have the time codes here for each method. First we'll do the simple one and then we'll do the more advanced method. So you can jump to either one. The more advanced one does have a little bit better browser support for Mod Organizer 2, but you might not need that. So for the simple version, just go to your Discovery Store and search for Proton Tricks. There you can install it, but there's a little bit of a problem here. Proton Tricks installed this way doesn't work on your command line immediately. Add Proton Tricks to the command line using this command, then close your terminal and restart it and try Proton Tricks to make sure it works. By default, Proton Tricks won't have access to other directories on your Steam Deck besides the default one. But if you scroll down a bit on the repo page, you can see how to configure that and set it up. That won't be necessary for today. Now, if you want to opt for this slightly more advanced version, we're going to use pipx to install Proton Tricks. This will give us some more features for using the browser from Model Organizer 2 compared to the previous version I just showed you. There are some steps to get this set up, but I'll walk you through each one right now. The first thing we're going to do is get Miniconda, which will allow us to have pipx on the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck does have Python installed by default, but actually getting pip running through the Steam Deck's Python installation was a little bit of a hassle, and this is just easier. So here, just download the link from Miniconda 3 Linux 64-bit. With this file downloaded now, we're gonna open a terminal where the file's located into chmod a plus rwx space, and then you can just hit tab for it to autocomplete the rest of it, and it'll fill out. Also do dot slash and hit tab, and then run the script. Now for the script here, basically accept every term here that it asks you about, and then I just went with a default installation path there, but there is one thing here that we really wanna hit yes to, and that's to run the init for Miniconda 3 that will add it to the path. There is another way to do this, but it's just really straightforward if you do it here when it prompts you to do it, so you don't have to mess around with that. Right here, hit yes, and then hit enter, and it'll be added to your path. With that done now, we're gonna run a couple more commands. I'll put them on the screen and in the description, python-m pip install pipx. Pip is a package manager for Python and pipx is just more specialized one. And Proton Tricks is only on pipx, so that's why we need to install it. So here we have installed it. Next, we wanna ensure that's in our path, so we'll just call that command. That'll add it to our path if it's not there. And then we can actually call pipx and use it to install stuff. There we go, added it. And now we can just use it to install Proton Tricks. Close your terminal and then open a new one. With our new terminal open, we'll just do Python M pipx space install Proton Tricks. And with that, just hit enter. It'll go through a little process. And once it's done, try typing in Proton Tricks to ensure that it installed right and can run. 
With this done, we can go ahead and install Mod Organizer 2 as this was our only dependency. Okay, so before we actually run the installation script for MO2, there's one directory we need to make, otherwise you'll hit an error like this. So the error here will tell you specifically what directory does not exist, and it's pretty simple. Just do mkdir and then space and enter in the exact directory that doesn't exist. Just make it, and then we can actually go ahead and run the installation script. Now with that directory set up, go to the folder where you downloaded MO2 into, and then do dot slash install dot sh. It'll tell you that all your dependencies are met if you're good to go. Here we'll select Skyrim Special Edition or whatever version of the game that you're using, and it'll tell you some specific things here. So open your Steam library and verify that all this information is correct and you've actually launched the game at least one time with Proton 6.3 used. So to do this, just right click on your Elder Scrolls Skyrim. I have the Special Edition installed here, which is also the Anniversary Edition with the update. And there should be no launch options by default. And then to set the specific version of Proton, go to Compatibility. And then here I already have it set, but click this little checkbox and then pick Proton 6.3 dash whatever is the latest version. For me, it's dash eight. There should probably only be one version of Proton 6.3 in there. Once that's all done, hit all done and let's continue. Now it'll prompt you to install Mod Organizer 2 to a directory. And if it doesn't exist, it'll create it for you. Now, if you follow the tutorial up to this step, you should be good to go and Mod Organizer 2 is installed. Now, if you launch Skyrim or whatever Bethesda game you're using, it'll actually open up Mod Organizer 2 now. And the first time you open it, it'll go through a setup phase. This terminal will pop up here and put out a bunch of information regarding Mod Organizer 2. You can mostly ignore it, but maybe if you have a problem, you can read through the log. Now here, we're creating a new instance of MO2 and I'm just gonna pick the portable instance. I think either one would probably work. Now you can just pick Skyrim or whatever game you're using. I hit the default location for this, just went through it. And now here's one spot where if you followed my tutorial earlier and used method two to set up Proton Tricks, if you click connect to Nexus, it should open up your browser. But if you followed the first method, that might not work. And you might need to generate an API key and then manually enter it in here from Mod Nexus. But since we followed method two for this, I'm just gonna hit connect to Nexus. It'll open Firefox and we can sign in and be good to go. So now that I've signed in here, I hit authorize. It'll say vortex, but it'll just go right to mod organizer two that you've had here. And as you can see, it says it's successfully linked. Then I just go ahead and finish the instancing of MO2. Now it'll go ahead and open it up. There'll be a tutorial you can go through the first time. I recommend doing this, but there's a lot of really good resources on YouTube also that will go in a lot more depth than me for using MO2. I'm honestly a lot more familiar with vortex, so I won't go into too much depth here. All right, I'm back on Nexus mods, and I'm gonna grab one of my favorite mods, Sky UI. This is also to illustrate that there's a small inconvenience here for using Mod Organizer 2 on the Steam Deck. So here I just check the requirements. SKSE64 is gonna be set up by default when you use this repo to install MO2, so you don't need to worry about that. But if you hit download the Vortex and then download this, it'll ask you what you wanna associate it with, and for us, we wanna use MO2. The problem is I have MO2 open in the background right now, and when I do this, it says, fail to start download. The solution here is just to close Mod Organizer 2 and make sure that this terminal also closes. So just wait for it, give it a second. I cut around it, but it takes a little while to close. Once that's done, go ahead and hit download again and open it with MO2 and it should open MO2 this time. And when it does, if you go to the downloads tab, you can see that your mod will be downloading as I will show you here in a second. Now the Sky UI downloaded, we can just right click on it and hit install. And then once it's installed on the left side, we will go and click on the checkbox to make sure it's enabled. For specific mods, there might be some dialogue that pops up here. I just went with the default name and I think it's good to go. And now we see here and I just click this checkbox or right click and enable it and the plugin should be enabled. All right, with this done, you can add more mods by closing this down and going back to Nexus mods and downloading more. Unfortunately, right now you have to go through this process of closing it and downloading them each time. But if you want, you could probably manually download them and then add them here somehow. Then you can also run Skyrim by just hitting the run button there to open the game up. But there's also something important here to do if you have a bunch of mods and that's to sort your plugins. Here, I'm just doing it for one. It's not really necessary if you just have one. 
But if you have a bunch of plugins, you want to make sure to organize them and sort them. It's pretty straightforward and I can cover it later in the video. Now this is a pretty cumbersome process because you have to close MO2 each time. To do this faster, you might just want to manually download the files to a 7-zip archive. And then once you have the 7-zip archive, you can use MO2 to manually install them. So just download a bunch of them. I have a couple here. And then I'll go ahead and go to MO2 and just hit install from archive, select each one, and it's definitely a faster process. Now if you want to update SKSC, it's pretty straightforward. Just download the latest version from the website. Move the DLLs over to the installation of Skyrim that you have. The installation of MO2 already put SKSE in this folder, so just move the .dlls and .exes right into this folder here and overwrite them, and then just grab the data folder from the new one and copy it over and paste it in and overwrite all the data there as well. With that, everything should be good to go with your new version of SKSE. So as far as sorting plugins goes, it's pretty straightforward. Here I have an arrangement of plugins installed. I just hit sort. Then Mod Organizer 2 will use Loot, which is Load Order Optimization Tool, to sort all the plugins. And once it's done, you should be good to go and just fire up the game. As I've mentioned before, this is a very basic overview of Mod Organizer 2. That's not what this video is for. It's how to set it up and generally use it. If you want more in-depth tutorials, look elsewhere. A lot of people cover this stuff in a lot of depth. There's things like cleaning mods and a bunch of other things. So definitely do research if you want the best experience possible. Now, as far as running Skyrim from game mode, if you launch Skyrim, it's gonna run Mod Organizer 2. So a little script will appear on your screen, it'll run through a couple things, then MO2 will open. Just go to the run with your trackpad, click it, and it'll open up Skyrim for you. Now, unfortunately for the next part, my capture card didn't wanna grab it, so I just had to use my camera to record it, but you just run the game from here, and then when you actually have Skyrim running, you would just exit it like you normally would, and then it'll bring up Mod Organizer 2 again. From there, you just hit File and Exit. It'll go back to the script. The script will finish up some things and then close, and you will be back to your Steam Deck's game mode. Now, as far as showing off modded footage here and giving some performance numbers, I'll show that another time, but I had about eight mods installed, some visual ones, some gameplay ones, and I just locked the Steam Deck down to 40 FPS. I was running high settings, and everything was basically locked at 40 FPS, no problems running around outdoors or indoors. So it worked great overall. As I mentioned earlier in this video, this should work for a lot of games that Bethesda makes. The list is on the GitHub repo, but support will vary. If you want to see a lot more videos just like this one, check out my channel and consider subscribing. I'll put a video up pretty soon showing some actual Skyrim gameplay that's modded with a bunch of mods installed on it. So check it out soon. Later.